All right. So this is going to be a review of the uh, GEE Tech acrylic uh, Perusa i3 Pro B 3D printer that's being sold on eBay for just under $160. Um, I had the opportunity to assist a student in building one of these kits and made some notes along the way of some good things or pros and some cons and or things that I think could have used some improvement. I want to share those with y'all in case you decide that you want to buy this as well. For starters, at $160, uh, that's certainly not a lot of money to invest in any kind of 3D printer. There are cheaper ones, but at that price point, it seems like a number of good features uh, were included, such as um, a 200 millimeter by 200 millimeter heated bed, a uh, GT2560 uh, controller board, which is essentially a Arduino Mega 2560 and a Ramps 1.4 board combined into one. This has dual Z axis uh, support, so you don't have to worry about cantilevered um, and a cantilevered axis that would end up drooping as a uh, as the uh, print head started getting further away from support. Also comes with LCD, so again you have the ability to control things uh, from the printer without being hooked up to a computer, as well as uh, SD card support. So, uh, those are certainly some pros. Uh, actually, I'll continue on the pros real quick. The frame uh, and the majority of the pieces of acrylic that are in it are 8 millimeter thick. Um, when these acrylic 3D printers first came out, not this one specifically, you were seeing a lot of 6 millimeter thick, 5, 6 millimeter thick. Uh, acrylic and that has a tendency to crack so the majority of this printer is 8 millimeter acrylic and it's pretty strong I will say that all of that acrylic is covered in a anti-scratch paper for transport and it will take you quite some time to get it all off so be prepared for that hopefully you have a fingernail and maybe a friend to scratch it all off uh, it does have some metal uh, components that typically you would see 3D printed in other printers. The uh, X gantry or X axis, uh, both uh, both sides um, are bent metal instead of 3D printed, so that's kind of nice. I will say they are also painted black and the paint has a tendency to get inside some of the nooks and crannies. So they include a file in case you need to open up a hole a little bit, which we had to do pretty substantially. Uh, it didn't take too much time, but uh, we couldn't put our or push our linear rods through otherwise. On that, yes, it does come with uh, hardened chrome linear rods as well as linear ball bearings. So again, that's good. We're not dealing with bushings or anything like that. Uh, the Z-axis, although in the pictures does look like they have lead screws or ball screws or something like that, given that they have these brass kind of nuts. Uh, all they are is threaded rod, eight millimeter threaded rod with a brass flange nut that can be screwed on. It's not as precision as uh, maybe you might like. Uh, let's see, let's see. Um, <laughs> One of the things I think I would have liked to have seen on here um, because they use so much eight millimeter thick uh, acrylic, the the carriage for the Y axis, it's the thing that the heated bed mounts to, is a big hunk of eight millimeter acrylic. I don't know why they decided that they needed eight millimeter there. Uh, that's one of the areas I would have thought they could have gone to like a six millimeter piece and tried to reduce some of the weight because it is pretty beefy. I think if you had the opportunity to cut some of that out, if you were building it to reduce its weight a little bit, that could be to your advantage. Uh, all five uh, stepper motors, 1.8 degree stepper motors, uh, are the same size. 
and for the most part that's fine if if I had my way I think I would have put a larger stepper motor on the Y axis just again because it's moving that big hunk of acrylic and whatever you're printing it wouldn't have hurt to have something a little larger there uh, let's see let's see what else what else standard GT2 belt with uh, 20 millimeter pulleys or 20 tooth pulleys excuse me uh, so that's you know again very very standard so that's good uh, it does use uh, flexible couplings for the stepper motors to the z-axis threaded rod again that's a nice feature the cheapest of these kinds of kits use like crimped on couplers which is pretty useless so I was glad to see that one of the most frustrating things I think in the whole build beyond the fact that they are a little behind on their manual they've made some changes and isn't totally reflected in the pictures in the manual uh, the Y axis belt attachment part uh, is this small block of aluminum underneath the X excuse me underneath the Y carriage and it threaded in a couple directions the the way that you attach a belt to it is you have to drill a hole or that's the words they use is drill a hole through each end of the belt about a quarter inch away from the end put an m3 nut through and then screw it to a piece of aluminum this aluminum block piece underneath and then it's fixed now if you've had any experience with 3d printers before a lot of the y belt mounting pieces are some form of 3d printed something with teeth that grab on to the 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 gt2 belt and perhaps also maybe wrap around and zip tie so that they're quite secure the idea of just putting a hole in a belt and then screwing it down with a m3 bolt and washer is a little concerning and unfortunately if you have if you cut the belt for this kit the way that they tell you to and choose you want to upgrade later uh, I believe the belt is then too short so you'd have to buy another length of GT2 belt so don't like that um, that said there are no 3d printed parts in this kit there's one injected molded part and that's for your X carriage so that it can bind or grab on to uh, the GT2 belt and that seems to be fine uh, the extruder itself mounts to a couple of metal plates, so pretty strong stuff, uh, very, very heat resistant. Overall, and I guess I'm going to wrap this up, overall I'm, I would say that this kit is worth every bit of what they're asking for it. Again, just under $160 now. Um, it's not fully upgradable, if you like if you had a ramps and Arduino Mega combination. When they did this controller board uh, configuration, they reduced a number of available pins. Those pins are usually used for upgrades like auto level, LED controls, um, gosh, other stuff. Uh, I think there's only three pins available, and they're pushing for the BL Touch um, auto level device. So if you put that on, I don't think you can upgrade too much more. Unless you also wanted to put another extruder on, because it does have that feature. But beyond that, that board's a bit, a bit more uh, scaled back. The uh, firmware support, or support in general, is in a forum-based uh, online community. It seems um, they're a little behind than the very most current Marlin firmware, but it doesn't seem to be too bad. And uh, any kind of features that you would want, again, that being most likely auto level, uh, are able to be enabled. So, uh, again, for 160 bucks or just less than, not a bad kit at all. There's a lot of value there and a lot of potential for upgrading in the future for not much more money. Again, going to probably a second extruder if you wanted it would probably run you another 50, 30 to 50 bucks in extra parts so that's not too bad uh, if you do decide to upgrade 
do uh, be aware that it only comes with a 15 amp 12 volt power supply so chances are you might want to up that a bit it's something probably more in the uh, 30 amp range if you can help it all right so that's my review again overall i think it's a pretty good kit with a couple of little you know, head scratchers throughout the way but uh, not bad at all all right thanks a lot bye